Dr. Mutlante, you said something interesting a short while ago. You say, uh, in order to be in solidarity, to contribute, you need to sacrifice material, skills, or time. And uh, that way you can make a useful contribution. Very interesting. And that's exactly what happened. I'm going back to the old story now of what happened. You are still a young person. You know, one could say, in today's context, there would be no reason for you to be there. You had other things to deal with. And there are many, many people. They went into exile, and prior to that, there were those who sacrificed their opportunities and so forth, pushing for change. And it took a long time for South Africa to attain the freedom. I mean, between the formation, for instance, of the African National Congress up to the, uh, the elections of 1994. Now, why does it seem like, and that's the general mood in the nation, that uh, the, the, the mismanagement, if you will, of this change is occurring at a much faster pace than the struggle for freedom? What are, what are your thoughts, given all the sacrifices that were made in the lead up to 94? Well, <clears throat> as they say, you know, uh, Tim, uh, power uh, corrupts and, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Uh, and, and Benjamin Franklin puts it differently. He says uh, uh, <clears throat> nearly all men can withstand adversity. Uh, but if you want to know the true character of any man, give them power. Uh, it is when people are in power, how they exercise the power that uh, gives you their true character. Uh, so, <clears throat> and, and Ali Mazrui uh, came here, you know, in, in, in uh, 1994 and, and gave a talk. Uh, in, in his talk, he spoke of three Vs, uh, the three Vs. He said the first V represents uh, victimhood, that we were victims of uh, racial oppression and apartheid and colon colonial colonialism. And, and, and that the second V is that we are now victors over both colonialism and uh, apartheid. And he said we must guard against the third V, that of becoming the next villains uh, in future. So <clears throat> these things uh, are there in the broad body of uh, knowledge of how societies uh, evolved over time. Mm. And, and, and so that's why we needed checks and balances in our systems. The Constitution, which is the supreme law of the land, uh, tried to uh, introduce those checks and balances. But of course, <clears throat> the test of the pudding uh, is in the eating. So we, we, we uh, learn in practical terms. Uh, we get to know uh, whether uh, it is, you know, uh, enough to have these checks and balances on, on in legislation mm. and, and so on, and all uh, institutions and agencies that are meant to uh, ensure that, you know, we don't slip uh, into the morass. But uh, uh, practically, uh, we've learned some important lessons. Society moves forward. People improve uh, if they draw lessons out of uh, their you know, mistakes and, and uh, you know, wrongdoing. If, if people learn out of that, mm. then uh, we, will, we will be able to, you know, move forward and, and consolidate uh, our democracy. Well, but what do you think then? Mm. I mean, uh, are, we, are we making progress? Are we learning anything? Mm. Are we on the right path? Mm. Because as I said, there's a general mood of despondency mm. that's growing in South Africa yeah. that it looks like we've, we are losing our way. Yeah. And uh, it could be the third force. You can blame anybody mm. for this. But from where you are sitting, mm. having been an activist and being leader and continuing to be one, we, that's why we're talking to you, seeking your views on these mm. things. What well, do you think is going on? Well, well I, I think you know our undoing uh, emanates from the fact that <clears throat> we've lowered the bar we settle for the lowest minimum required. Uh, we are not prepared to be held accountable. Uh, uh, that in itself, uh, you know, creates an environment, unfortunately, in which, uh, you know, <coughs> uh, nothing matters. Uh, and, and if nothing matters, you know, for many people, the, 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 
a few weeks ago, the Kennedys were here because Robert Kennedy came to these shores mm. 50 years ago. And, and in his address to the students at uh, UCT, uh, he, <clears throat> he, he said to them, you know, where there's a road that we need to follow where to, you know, get justice, uh, peace, and, and to sustain hope. Uh, but said to them, there are four dangers against, you know, that you are going to find strewn all over this road. Uh, the first one, he says, uh, is a sense of futility. Uh, when people say, what is the point? Mm. Yeah. Mm. You know, uh, these things happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a sense of futility. And he said the second one is a sense of expediency. Uh, when uh, people want, you know, uh, think that, you know, the, the, the end justifies the means. So mm. it doesn't matter how you acquire mm. whatever, uh, at the end uh, is what matters. And the third one, he says, is timidity. Uh, when, when, when people simply are timid and mm. accept that uh, to be treated shabbily uh, and, and expect no uh, demand, no better, uh, that's timidity. And he says uh, the fourth danger is comfort. When those who uh, means and circumstances make them comfortable and, and they are not prepared to forego that. Uh, for any reason whatsoever. So <clears throat> this is where we are today. I, I think, you know, his message uh, given, delivered 50 years ago uh, can find deep resonance among many, many people today uh, in, in the sense that, uh, you know, people just say, uh, so what? I mean, if, if it is possible uh, today that, uh, you know, <clears throat> At whatever level, a councillor can take public money uh, and buy himself or herself a car, uh, and, and that's okay. Uh, then there's something fundamentally wrong uh, with, with where we are. And, and so we must try and, and get to a point where, uh, one, we strive for excellence. Two, we uh, hold each other accountable. Uh, and, and that wrongdoing must elicit consequences. If that doesn't happen, uh, we are doomed. But, but the dominant political party, which is the government mm -hmm. and has been there up to now, you know, it's the, it's the ANC, your organization. Yes. yes. Do you think that it's living by those things or are you referring specifically to the ANC? I'm speaking about the ANC, yes. That's my organization. That's. And, and as a central organization yes. in South African society, yes. that uh, uh, what the ANC is able to do uh, is so central that you know it either impacts positively or negatively on society. Unfortunately, uh, we, we we are in in a in a in a space where uh, it impacts negatively. Uh, I mean, you know the number of people who uh, have died now because of mis, uh, you know, understandings around selection and election of, of candidates mm -hmm. uh, uh, is alarming. So what is to be done? I mean, you spoke mm -hmm. at the uh, conference of the ANC in Mangaung mm -hmm. and spoke about the culture of slates. You, yeah. you, you, you raised the issue, not yeah. once, many times. Yeah. And is it still continuing? And uh, how do you think it must be fixed if it's not been fixed? Well, you know, <clears throat> the, the, <clears throat> the, the ANC is structured in a particular way. Uh, its highest decision-making structure is a national elective conference. Uh, it's followed by a national executive committee and uh, provincial executive committees, and as well as regional executive committees and branch executive committees. Now, <clears throat> I think what, what has happened is these structures of elected leadership, which are meant to coordinate the activities of the general membership of the ANC, have now substituted themselves for the general membership. 
So <clears throat> in a branch, uh, meetings, general members' meetings are rarely ever convened. Uh, views of general members cannot be uh, conveyed accurately for them to, to uh, elicit, you know, uh, the, the correct responses. And, and so, <clears throat> because of that, this, this uh, you know, if a properly constituted branch of the ANC, which holds correcting meetings, if it's a selection or election and nomination of uh, candidates uh, is not one that sits well with uh, an, a regional leadership, they can nullify that process. And, and uh, you know, until deep frustration takes root. Uh, so <clears throat> I think that has impaired the internal democratic practices of the ANC. And, and uh, without that, uh, people then resort to other means and methods of, uh, you know, uh, getting their concerns addressed. But, but then it suggests that if the ANC is in decline, being a dominant uh, from political organization that's at the center of public life, then it leads to the decline of the nation, doesn't it? Yes, it does. That's why I'm saying, uh, you know, the, the ANC is so central that, you know, whatever it does or says, can either impact positively on society or negatively. So it impacts negatively when, uh, because you see, the, the support base of uh, the ANC, the acceptance on the part of broader, uh, you know, sections of society, uh, of, of the ANC's leadership role, uh, is called into question if it is questionable. Uh, I mean, if, uh, if you can have a public, rep, uh, you know, uh, office bearer saying, I've got something to hide and nothing happens, uh, something is fundamentally wrong. Uh, fundamentally but, but wrong. But what makes it difficult for ANC to self-correct, mm. you think? If, if these things are known to you, they are spoken about yeah. generally publicly, yeah. and, uh, but it looks like it's, uh, it's difficult. Mm. And it's, I think it's a role of leadership anyway, well, well, at the end of the day, to fix problems. That's right. But, you know, I go back to uh, these dangers that were pointed out by Bobby Kennedy 50 years ago, that you find expediency, you find timidity, you find, uh, you know, comfort, uh, and, and you find... Uh, futility. Futility. Uh -huh. uh, because... of the comforts of, you know, uh, being in a, in a, in a, in a, you know, being an office bearer uh, in government. Uh, people see that as the be all and end all. That, you know, you, you are prepared to supplicate yourself uh, in order to stay in that comfort. Uh, and, and it induces the timidity that you can't uh, follow your conscience. You can't uh, respond to, uh, you know, challenges uh, to the best of, of your understanding. Uh, you, you know, so there's expediency. Uh, you know, there's timidity. Uh, there's, there's, there's comfort. Uh, and there's futility. People say, well, what does it matter? What does it matter? Because, you know, uh, the, the, the so-and-so has tried it, never worked. You do mm. this, uh, all, all you will earn is that you will be purged uh, from all uh, whatever you, uh, uh, you know, have been doing now and, mm. and so on. Mm. And, 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 and <clears throat> that's what needs to be overcome. Uh, uh, Kenneth Kaunda, when he was president of Zambia in the olden days, uh, used to refer to it as politics of the stomach. Mm. Yeah. Haluma Mutlante is our guest, and we are talking to him about the state of affairs. We'll also be talking about his own life and uh, politics, and we'll do so in a moment.